Welcome to your most favorite channel, Heartbeat. My name is Dr. Amrit Kejriwal. This channel is mainly meant for MBBA students, postgraduates, medical professionals, and all those who may find it a bit more easy. It is an attempt to make the complicated medical sciences more simplified and easier for understanding. Today we learn something about hypernatremia. Channel's name is Heartbeat. My name is Dr. Amrit Kejriwal. Definition Plasma sodium greater than 145 milliequivalents per liter. Normal range of sodium is 135 to 145. Less than 135 is called hyponatremia and more than 145 is hypernatremia. The entire medical sciences just resolves on one basic principle, maintenance of homeostasis. It is associated with a mortality of 40 to 60 percent. So, since the mortality rate is very high, it is necessary to treat hypernatremia in patients. There is a combined loss of water and sodium and the water loss exceeds the sodium loss. There can be extra renal losses, various causes, fever and exercise, heat exposure, burns, ventilatory support and diarrhea. Renal loss can be due to osmotic or nephrogenic central diabetes insipidus. Osmotic again can be due to various causes such as hyperglycemia, mannitol, urea excess and post obstructive diuresis. An osmotic gradient between extracellular fluid and intracellular fluid is created and this efflux of the intracellular fluid. Due to this efflux, cell shrinkage occurs and symptoms are primarily neurological. Clinical features. You can have altered sensorium and this may be having a spectrum. There can be mild confusion, true lethargy and this can further progress to coma. So when the patient can present to us with hypernatremia, they can have mild confusion, lethargy or coma. There may be the coexistence of hypernatremic rhabdomyolysis and in patients with chronic hypernatremia, they have less symptoms. Approach is based on the history, clinical examination, lab investigations. On the history, you took, take the absence or presence of thirst, polyuria, extra renal loss of water and look for medication use. Clinical examination, you have to look for the neurological status. You have to assess the extracellular fluid volume. This can be done easily by JVP and orthostatic, looking for orthostatic hypotension. And chart the input and output to measure the ongoing losses. Lab investigations include serine and urine osmolality, urinary electrolytes. Look for diabetes insipidus, give DDAVP, that is desmopressin, check response of urine osmolality and measure the AVP simultaneously. Now coming to the approach, see the extracellular fluid volume. If it is increased, it means there is an excessive intake of sodium. This can be usually by intravenous route or orally. If it is not increased, and the patient has a minimum volume of highly concentrated urine. It means that the urine should be yellow. The patient can be having insensible water loss, GI loss or renal loss. Do the os urine osmol excretion rate greater than 750 milliosmoles per day. Then the patient ha could be having diuretic or osmotic diuresis. Look for the renal response to desmopressin. Urine osmolality increases with desmopressin. Then the patient has central diabetes insipidus. If the urine osmolality remains the same, then the patient has nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. Treatment. Remove the offending condition which could be hyperglycemia, hypercalcemia, hypokalemia and diarrhea. These are the easiest treatable causes. 
Calculate the water deficit that is total body water in fe females is 50% of the body weight and in males it is approximately 60% of the body weight. Calculate the free water deficit that is sodium minus 140 divide this by 140 and divide this by TBW which was calculated over here the total body water. From this we can calculate the free water deficit and this water has to be replenished in 48 to 72 hours and a target of less than 10 to 10 millimoles per 24 hours has to be achieved not more than that patient may be having ongoing losses so water correction has to be done for that also and add for insensible loss less if ventilated and more if febrile additional treatment may be required in specific patients so free water may be given through nasogastric tube or orally may be given as 5% dextrose patients may require hypotonic saline that is 0.45% normal saline special considerations have to be taken central diabetes insipidus response to desmopressin and for the chronic management of nephrogenic diabetes insipidus Lithium induced nephrogenic diabetes insipidus usually responds to amyloride and nephrogenic diabetes insipidus due to other causes can respond to thiazide diuretics and NSAIDs. But remember this is only for chronic management of nephrogenic diabetes insipidus and not for regular management for the acute hyponatremia.